How is Genesis 1 fulfilled in Jesus Christ? Genesis tells us not only how God created the world and first engaged with the human race, but also what the world is and man's destiny in relation to the whole cosmos. Genesis begins with the creation of the heavens and the earth over a period of six days, followed by God's rest on the seventh day. In Exodus 25-31, God provides the blueprint for the tabernacle. Israel's first sanctuary, in seven speeches, and in 1 Kings 6.37, we are told that it took King Solomon seven years to build the temple. That creation takes place over a week suggests that the world in its totality is a temple. But what is a temple? A temple is the place where God lives and dwells, where he meets with his people in person so that they might come to know him and see him as he is. Exodus 40 describes how God's glory filled the tabernacle to its brim, and 1 Kings 8 tells the same story about the temple. Indeed, Psalm 132 uses the language of God resting to refer to God's resting in his sanctuary. God wants to live in the world, but that's not all. God wants to live in the world through and with us. After all, The reason that the tabernacle and temple were constructed was so that, as God says in Leviticus 26.12, God would live and walk among his people. And just as a temple in the ancient world is crowned with an image of a deity, so God in Genesis 1 fashions man as his real image. A god was supposed to live in its temple through the image placed therein. And if Genesis 1 is about the fashioning of the world as a temple, then man, the image of God, is the instrument by which God lives in the world. Genesis 1-1 tells us that God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. And Genesis 2-4 tells us that Adam is the offspring or generations of the heavens and the earth. He is fashioned by the union of God's spirit, the very breath of life, and the raw material of the world, the dust of the ground. God created all reality as heaven and earth, but he wants to bring these two spheres of reality together, and he does so by man. In the story of creation, we meet God's twofold purpose in the world. First, God wants to live in the world so that its life is drawn into his own. Second, he wants man to be his image, the link tying together heaven and earth and drawing God's life into the world. This is why Jesus Christ came into the world. Christianity teaches that Jesus Christ is both God and man. Before time flowed, the divine Son always existed. He is the model or blueprint for every created relationship, being an eternal relationship to his heavenly Father. And it is therefore in Jesus Christ that God fulfills his purpose to dwell in the physical world and fulfills man's purpose to be God's agent in pouring life into the world. This is why Ephesians 1.11 tells us that God unites all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. God created heaven and earth, and he fashioned man as the offspring of heaven and earth. In Jesus Christ, the one through whom the world was made in the beginning, joins himself to the creature who crowns that world. Heaven and earth are tied together in him, both because he is God and because he is man. And this is the mystery of the gospel, that we are not merely beneficiaries of what Christ has done for us. He became what we are so that we can become as he is. We are members of his body and can become truly human by becoming like God. And now, joined to divine life, We are called to link the world around us to the God who linked us to him.